Hi, I'm Matt Turner from Enduring Domain Architecture. Welcome to Mill View. Come on in for a tour. First things first, I begin today by acknowledging the Jar Jar Barong people, traditional custodians of the land on which we meet today, and pay my respects to their elders past and present. I extend that respect to Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples viewing this video today. Well, it's probably not a usual way to begin a house tour through the laundry, but in fact, this is not just a laundry. It's our front door, it's an airlock, and it's a mudroom. Being a home in the country, we don't need a traditional entryway facing the street. We just need a convenient space to come in, kick off the muddy boots, shut the door behind us, and not let all of our hot air out. But once we go through this door, we are immediately into the heart of the home. Being an architect and designing comfortable houses for other people for 20 years now, now that I've got my own family, we had an opportunity to build something for ourselves. We decided to see how far we could go on a very modest budget to design and build something which is going to be extremely energy efficient, extremely thermally comfortable, in this quite cold area uh, where we have chosen to live. Growing up in central Victoria and Ballarat, I've always lived in freezing cold weatherboard homes and what we were really seeking was the ultimate in luxury and that for us was warmth. And warmth without a lot of effort or without a lot of cost. So my philosophy was to prioritise the budget on having a very well insulated, very airtight building envelope rather than spending money on aesthetic items such as uh, high-end materials or trying to mimic a certain architectural style. Of course, we also wanted to make the house beautiful and look like it fits in in its place. And a lot of the older homes around the area have a very typical steep pitched roof which we have used here and as a bonus the north facing side of that pitched roof is also ideal to mount solar panels in a way that can maximise energy generation. We decided to build our home with structural insulated panels or SIPs. These provide the structure an airtight and continuously insulated external shell with minimal thermal bridging and in our case, it's also the internal wall finish. So we didn't double up by spending more money on putting plasterboard lining over the OSB walls of the SIP panels. The material sourced by the manufacturer are low VOC, and they are manufactured only 20 minutes away from here, so there is very low energy in the transportation. Given the airtight nature of the construction method, it was crucial that we use a heat recovery ventilation system or HRV. This provides continuous fresh filtered air while simultaneously exhausting the stale moist air. This is key to not only providing a healthy indoor environment but also mitigates structural damage caused by condensation and mold. A bathroom mirror doesn't fog up, the towels are always dry, CO2 levels are kept to a minimum and humidity remains comfortable. Well, some people might say that one of the key components of a passive house is the heat recovery ventilation system, but I think the HRV is very much an active system. It's plugged into the power, it's running 24 hours a day. It ticks along doing its own thing, you don't know it's there, uh, you can't really hear it unless you're up in the roof space close to it like what we are now. So there's only two penetrations through the external envelope. One is the fresh air intake, the other one is the stale air exhaust. And what you can see at the underside of the ceiling is spray foam. So this is a conditioned roof space, uh, very clean, very well sealed up. So the insulation is at the roof line However, we also have an additional layer of R6 bats at the ceiling level, which reduces 
the condition volume under the ceiling that we're trying to heat and cool. And this has made a big difference having this extra layer of insulation. We're not trying to heat or cool all of this roof space up in here. So all of these ducts for the HRV system are insulated and they are suspended so that insulation is free to lay flat on the ceiling without any interruptions. The design achieved a 7.6 star energy rating in climate zone 7, which is cool temperate. There's only one climate zone colder than that in Australia, and that's the Alpine regions. So to get this kind of rating, you know we're doing pretty well. 7.6 stars equates to around 50% of the energy consumption required to heat and cool a home, compared with the minimum 6 star standard. We did, however, upgrade to some better performing windows and doors with U values of around 1.8. That combined with the very good air tightness of the home means that in reality, it has probably performed better than the simulated energy rating would suggest. As far as size goes, while well, the average Australian home in 2020 was 235.8 square metres, while well, the average household number is down to 2.6 people, that equates to 90.7 square metres per person. By contrast, our home is 117 square metres with three people, which equates to 39 square metres per person, which we feel is more than ample.